In the ancient days before the great flood, there lived a man named Enoch. He was the son of Jared and the father of Methuselah, yet in the scriptures little is said about him. All we know is that he lived for 365 years, and then something extraordinary happened. It is written that Enoch walked faithfully with God, then he was no more, because God took him away. Genesis 5:24. This cryptic passage has led many to believe that Enoch did not experience death in the usual sense, but was instead taken by God to dwell with him in heaven. Although the traditional texts do not mention Enoch again, he gained significant prominence during the Second Temple period, a time spanning from 450 BCE to 70 CE. Interestingly, echoes of Enoch's story can be found in the Gospels, particularly in the concept of Jesus of Nazareth being referred to as the Son of Man. Moving forward in history, we find Israel facing numerous trials and tribulations. In 722 BCE, the mighty Assyrian Empire conquered the northern kingdom of Israel, scattering its people and effectively erasing ten of the twelve tribes from historical records. Then, in 587 BCE, the southern kingdom of Judah fell to the Neo-Babylonian Empire, with Jerusalem and its holy temple being destroyed. The prophets of the time attributed these calamities to the sins of the people particularly their indulgence in idolatry. However, amidst the despair, the prophets offered a beacon of hope. They prophesied of a time when God would intervene decisively in human affairs, sending a messianic figure to lead Israel to glory once more. This vision was encapsulated in the concept of the kingdom of God on earth, where divine justice would reign supreme, and humanity would return to its original state of grace. Throughout subsequent centuries, Israel endured further trials, including the conquests of Alexander the Great and the oppressive rule of Antiochus Epiphanes IV. These events fueled a fervent longing among the Jewish people for divine intervention. Various sects emerged, each interpreting the prophetic texts in their unique ways and eagerly awaiting the fulfillment of ancient prophecies. By the time of the Second Temple period, traditional prophets had ceased to exist, giving way to seers who claimed to receive visions of the future directly from heaven. These apocalyptic writings, often attributed to revered figures like Enoch, served to bolster the faith of the people and offer reassurance in tumultuous times. And the books of Enoch unveil a world beyond the mortal realm, where Enoch, once taken up by God, ascended to become the guardian of heavenly treasures. In this celestial position, he led the archangels and served as God's attendant at his majestic throne. The Enochian literature, consisting of three distinct books, delves into various subheadings like the similitudes of Enoch, the book of the parables of Enoch, the book of the giants, the book of dream visions, and the book of the watchers. These writings also mention Enoch in Jubilees and the book of Syrac, weaving a rich tapestry of heavenly mysteries and divine revelations. Yet, the journey takes a dark turn as we delve into the cryptic story outlined in Genesis 6 1-4, where the sons of God descend to earth captivated by the beauty of human daughters. This forbidden union gives rise to the Nephilim, ancient heroes of renown, and sets the stage for the impending divine intervention, the Great Flood. The Enochian literature, however, unveils the specific horrors of this mingling of celestial and earthly beings. The terms watchers and giants become intertwined, revealing a narrative where angels exploit humans, turning them into slaves. Azazel, one of these fallen angels, imparts forbidden knowledge to mankind, including the arts of metallurgy and cosmetics, leading to widespread godlessness, corruption, and moral decay. Azazel's fall from grace is poignantly depicted in the Enochian texts, where he becomes the demon associated with the scapegoat in the Yom Kippur ritual, a symbol of atonement for the sins of the nation. This figure seamlessly integrates into the broader tradition surrounding the fall of Satan or the devil from heaven. As the celestial drama unfolds, the archangel Michael receives a divine command to bind these fallen angels for seventy generations, consigning them to the valleys of the earth until the day of their eternal judgment. The abyss of fire awaits them, a prison where they will be confined forever. In the annals of early Christianity, Enoch emerges as a pivotal figure in two profound ways. Firstly, his story becomes intertwined with the Son of Man traditions, a theme later absorbed into Christian teachings. Secondly, Enoch's celestial experiences validate the pre-existence and divinity of Jesus Christ. The Enochian journey reveals encounters with the God of Israel and a mysterious figure standing beside his throne, referred to as the Son of Man. Enoch, 
in his celestial sojourn, describes the radiant countenance of this figure, whose righteousness and divine mission are foretold. This son of man, as revealed in one Enoch, is destined to raise kings and mighty rulers from their seats, bringing justice and righteousness to the earth. His name predates the creation of the sun, stars, and heavenly signs, a figure of unparalleled significance. This son of man, heralded as the light of the Gentiles and the hope for the troubled, is destined to be worshipped by all who dwell on earth. In the final days, a great battle between God's forces and the nations will unfold, and the Son of Man will play a pivotal role in judging humanity. Early Christians drew a direct parallel between this celestial figure and Jesus of Nazareth, explaining Jesus' unique ability to forgive sins on earth, traditionally reserved for God alone. The apocalyptic visions of Daniel, portraying a Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven, found resonance in Jesus' own declarations during his trial before the Sanhedrin. As the early Christian communities grappled with the proclamation of Jesus of Nazareth as the long-awaited Messiah, they encountered a dilemma. The traditional concept of the Messiah, rooted in the image of a triumphant warrior king like David, seemed at odds with the events of Jesus' crucifixion at the hands of the Roman Empire. How could a slain Messiah fulfill the prophecies of old? In the communities fostered by Paul, a new understanding began to emerge, one that drew from the teachings of Enoch and other ancient texts. Here, Jesus was not merely a human figure, but was proclaimed as the Son of Man, existing before all creation. Paul's words in his letter to the Colossians echoed this belief, painting Jesus as the cosmic figure through whom all things were created, existing before time itself. This concept of Jesus as the pre-existent Son of Man, a light to the Gentiles, found resonance in the writings of Isaiah and was embraced by early Christian missionaries. It served as a theological basis for welcoming Gentiles into the faith without imposing Jewish identity markers like circumcision and dietary laws. The Gospel of John further elaborated on this idea, presenting Jesus as the divine word made flesh, dwelling among humanity. The resurrection and ascension of Jesus were seen through the lens of Enoch's heavenly journey, where the righteous were taken up by God. The stoning of Stephen, recounted in the Acts of the Apostles, affirmed Jesus' exalted position in heaven, seated at the right hand of God. In the letter to the Hebrews, Enoch's translation from earthly life to divine presence served as a parallel to Jesus' own exaltation. Early Christians, influenced by the Enochian literature and the book of Daniel, began to worship Jesus as a divine being. These beliefs laid the groundwork for the later development of the Christian doctrine of the Trinity, which affirmed the unity of Jesus and God in essence. The Nicene Creed, formulated in 325 CE, solidified Jesus' role as the final judge, echoing the apocalyptic visions of Enoch and Daniel. Although the Enochian texts were not included in the Jewish or Christian canons of scripture, they wielded significant influence in early Christian thought. Church fathers in the 2nd and 3rd centuries utilized these texts to elucidate the nature of evil, prophesy the end times, and validate the pre-existence of Christ. However, as time passed and the anticipated kingdom failed to materialize, the end-time prophecies were deferred to the future, and the church itself became seen as the embodiment of the kingdom on earth. The survival and dissemination of the books of Enoch across centuries and cultures attest to their enduring significance. From the discovery of ancient manuscripts like the Dead Sea Scrolls, to translations in Syriac and Ethiopian texts, scholars have delved into these texts, debating their dating, authorship, and theological implications. The Enoch Seminar, founded in 2001, stands as a testament to the ongoing scholarly interest in Enochian literature, providing a platform for research and discussion among international scholars. Through their efforts, the legacy of Enoch continues to illuminate our understanding of the historical context and theological developments of early Christianity.